American John Baldessari was known for his use of found photography in appropriated images, often taking them out of their original context. He is also remembered for his dot work, where he placed a dot sticker over people's faces. He also fills in spaces of images, as demonstrated in his Gemini series of 2006. He passed away in 2020. British artist Gerald Lang's paintings of film stars, dragsters, and other icons of popular culture made him a major figure in the pop art movement. He passed away in 2011. We will focus on his Baby Baby Wild Thing series from the late 1960s. We can even see British graphic designers Jimmy Terrell and Steve Stacey applying something similar to the album cover design for Beck's 2017 album, Colors. In this video, we will appropriate photos to apply halftone effects and hide or remove elements of the photo to create a work of art in Procreate. Here are some examples I have made, as well as some other effects. This task should take about 45 to 60 minutes to complete. How to remix a photo inspired by Gerald Lang and John Baldessari in Procreate. For this task, you will need an image. Feel free to use a celebrity or a popular object such as a car. I like to use an image of a person that has the hand showing as well. Find an image you like from online. Tap on it to see the size. We will be creating work A3 in size, so I'd suggest finding something around 1000 pixels. Pictures around 500 will probably be pixelated when viewed at 100%. To save the photo, tap and hold. When the window opens, select Add to Photos. We are now ready to start our work. Open Procreate. In the top right corner, press the plus sign. Here you will see some options, but we are going to create our own canvas size. Press the black rectangular box with a plus sign in it. Change the dimensions to millimeters. Enter 297 for the width and 420 for the height. Enter 300 in the DPI area. DPI means dots per inch. The higher the DPI, the less pixelation occurs if we were to draw. The higher the DPI also reduces the amount of layers available to you. Click Create when done. Our document opens and you can decrease or increase the size by pinching two fingers in or out. You can also turn or rotate it if you wish by pinching your two fingers and turning as well. The first thing we need to do is insert the photo we will use. Go to the Actions tab or the wrench icon here in the left hand corner. Select Add, Insert a Photo. Tap which photo you will use. The photo will automatically appear in the center of the canvas. Click Fit to Canvas here at the bottom. To increase or decrease the size, use the corner nodes to drag it in or out. The green circle at the top is for rotating the photo. One thing to be aware of is that if the photo runs off the frame and you then set it, that section will be lost. I'm going to increase the size and reposition it simply by sliding it around. Thinking about the composition is important at this stage. To set the image and exit, deselect the arrow in the blue circle from the top right. We are going to erase the background of our photo. You see we have a layer called background and it is automatically set to white. We are going to change it to red. Use the color disk or classic option at the bottom here to do this. As we erase, we will then see the red background show through. The contrast will be easier for us to view. Go to the eraser tool located just next to the layers icon. We are going to go into inking and select syrup. If you tap on the syrup eraser, a window will open where you can adjust the properties. This works the same way as the pencil tool. If you have shaky hands, you may want to stabilize it or adjust the pressure, etc. But don't do it too much. You can test this out in the drawing pad area here on the right. Feel free to explore this if you have difficulties. Click done to exit. So I am on my image layer and using the eraser. Since we have a red background layer, when I erase parts of the photo, it will show up red and be easier to see if I miss any spots. If you take an image of a person with a lot of hair, you may be better off going into the eraser area and selecting airbrush, soft brush. This does not leave a hard erase line. This is useful for going around wavy or curly hair. I'm going to zoom into the image by pinching in two fingers. You can adjust the size of the eraser from the slider over here on the left. I'm going to go along the edges and erase all the background. If you make a mistake, simply press the back arrow or undo button located here on the left. I'll speed up here just erasing around the edges and then the remaining parts. I often rotate my canvas as it is just easier to work this way. When done, all my background will appear red. 
Sometimes my hand will accidentally leave an erase mark on the image as I trace around it. This will show up in our finished work. It's good to use the back arrow or undo button to rectify this. Annoying, I know. I'm done the erasing and will now change the red background layer to white again. Since we've done all this hard work, it's good to create a duplicate or backup of the photo just in case. To do this, go into the Layers panel up here in the top right corner. Swipe the layer to the left and press Duplicate. The photo will be copied on a new layer. We can turn off one of these photos by deselecting the box. We probably won't need it, but it's good to have it as a backup just in case. We are now ready to apply effects. If your photo is already in black and white, or you wish to keep it in color, skip ahead to the next chapter. If you wish to convert your photo to black and white, do the following. Choose your photo layer. Go up to the top left area to the Adjustments tab. Select Hue, Saturation, Brightness. On the bottom window, lower Hue and Saturation all the way down to make the image black and white. You can also adjust the brightness if you wish. In Adjustments, you can also select Curves if you wish to further manipulate the image, but this is optional. The main one is Gamma. Tap to exit. Let's go into the Layers panel and create a new layer by pressing the plus sign. Go into the color picker and select a color. Drag it into the new layer. It will cover our photo because this layer is on top. In the Layers panel, tap and hold this color layer and drag it underneath the image layer. Let's create another new layer on top. This will be the layer to draw on. I'm going to also turn off the background layer so it will be a little easier to see. I'm doing this because I'm using the same color and I want to be careful in case I change my mind later. Let's start hiding or eliminating areas from the photo similar to the work of Gerald Lang. I'm using the inking syrup brush. The easiest thing to do is remove an area by making it disappear into our background color. I'll go over a section of the hat here to demonstrate this. I can use the eraser tool to clean the ends of my line work. Once closed, I can drag the color picker into the area. If it is not closed, the color will spill into the entire frame. I'll then turn my background layer back on. This is the easiest way to accomplish a similar style to the work of Lang. I'm going to create another layer and fill in the shirt blue. I'm going to add a pink circle over the face like Baldessari. Simply draw a circle, but at the end, don't lift your pencil. Procreate will improve it for you. To make a perfect circle, tap and hold the screen with your other hand. You can also slide your pencil in or out to increase or decrease the size. If you need to reposition it, go to the selection tool at the top. I'll need to loosely trace around the circle to select it, otherwise my circle and blue shirt will both move since they are on the same layer. Once you see the box around it, you can slide and move it around. Tap the arrow tool to set and close. I'll also just fill it with color. The good thing about Procreate is that it's easy to experiment. Let me turn off a layer and select the image layer. What would happen if we dried color onto the photo? So that could be interesting. I'm going to create another layer and drag it behind the image to draw an organic shape. You need to make sure the shape is closed, otherwise the color will spill into the entire frame. Another thing to try out is blocking parts with color, which is similar to the first thing we did. I'm going to color his suit green. I'm at a disadvantage because I can't see the difference between the pants and jacket, so I'll just do the whole thing. I think it will look better with a darker green, so I'll adjust that and turn the other layer back on. What would happen if I made the suit the same color as the background? Let's give it a try. Tap and hold on your background layer with your finger. This will select that color. So this looks very minimalistic now. I think I'll keep the green since there may be too much negative space. I'm going to quickly erase the pink circle so it's easier to see what we'll do next. If you wish to apply halftone, like this dot effect, watch the following. Make sure you have your image layer selected. Go to the Adjustments tab again, and towards the bottom, select Halftone. At the bottom you will see three options. Simply tap and slide your Apple Pencil on the screen to the right to apply the effect, or left to lower the effect. You do the same with the other two. Select which one you prefer. Press Tab button to exit. If you zoom in, you may see some stray dots. I'm going to erase these out of preference. 
If you go back to the Adjustments tab again, select Chromatic Aberration. Tap and slide your Apple Pencil around to view the different positioning. You can also change the location of the circle by dragging it. Now try out Displace. Slide your pencil over the image to rearrange the placement. You will have a different appearance depending if your photo is color or black and white. I'm going to duplicate my image layer on top and see how the effect changes. And I like that. I'm just going to go through some of my layers to see if there are any stray marks that need erasing or repair. To finish it off, I'll add a circle again. To save our drawing, go to Actions and select Share and JPEG. It will then prepare for export. Then click Save Image and it will be saved in the Photos app. You can also go to Share, JPEG and select AirDrop if you wish to export it to another device. You see, this was a fairly simple process and this tutorial was a basic outline. To take it further, ask yourself how to modernize the work. What would it look like if there were multiple people in an image? How does the image change when parts are eliminated or hidden behind blocks of color? Can color be used more effectively? Can further effects be applied with brushes, etc.? Would inserting text change or enhance the work? I hope yours turns out well and feel free to experiment. Thanks for checking out this video. I have a few other Procreate tutorials as well if interested. The playlist will be linked above. Feel free to subscribe, hit the like button or leave a comment, suggestion or video request below. This has been a Video Production.